Welcome to the Online Course Masters show where you'll learn how to create and sell your very own online courses. I'm your host, Phil Ebener, and today with Jeremy Deegan, we're excited to dive into another great topic, scripting courses, the pros and cons, and whether you should script or just maybe outline. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to view the video version of this episode and to see an archive of all our past episodes and guests. And while you're listening, please make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening and take a moment to leave a rating, which helps us reach an even larger audience and continue to bring out and put out more episodes completely free with all this great information for you. So let's dive before we dive into scripting or not. Jeremy, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. So fun fact I thought we can talk about today is what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a kid? Did you, are you, are you fulfilling your life dreams? <laughs> I'm definitely fulfilling them because I was a kid who really didn't have Ed, any idea what he wanted to be when he grew <laughs> up. <laughs> this is, this is a, a question that, uh, my wife and I joke around a lot about because, uh, if you've ever seen the movie, um, office space. Mm -hmm. Uh, He asked this question in there and his answer is, I just don't want to do anything. I just want to sit on the beach or sit on the couch and do nothing. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know, man. I just, I've always had so many hobbies and interests. I always wanted to play music. Uh, I got to do that in like high school and after high school, but I never became a rock star. I always liked graphic design and computers. Luckily I'm doing some of that now. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) My background's in 3d animation. I really don't do that anymore. So I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I never really thought about it a whole lot. Or if I thought about it, I didn't have an answer. What about you? Well, when I was a young kid, I mean, for a while, I was serious about wanting to be a baseball player. And baseball was like my passion through up until like high school, really. I mean, and I was serious. You think about like an eighth grader, you know, playing baseball, thinking they're serious. uh, But I felt very seriously about wanting to, to go pro. But then, you know as life goes on, you realize there's some like physical limitation in my height and (laughs) just like the chances and the odds. And then, you know, passions change as well. But for a long time, that's, that's really wanted what I wanted to be. And then for a while, I wanted to be a broadcaster for sports. So through high school and even going into college, that was sort of one of my ideas. Uh, But I also think that in general, I just didn't want to have like a normal job, like a nine to five job where I had a commute and a boss. And I quickly learned after college having like a nine to five and a boss and a commute that wasn't going to work out for me. So that's why I work (laughs) out of my garage. Uh, But hey, I am loving it and I'm pretty fortunate to be doing so. Yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that. I mean, uh, I've always had side businesses or side hustles or small businesses. I did screen printing. I've done web design. So I think when I look back, it's like, it makes sense that, and probably for you, like you said, you're entrepreneurial as a kid. And I was always trying to sell baseball cards to my friends Mm -hmm. or my siblings or making an extra buck selling stuff on eBay or whatever it was. And now it's like, yeah, actually it makes sense that I wanted to like do my own business. So I would, I would probably bet that most people listening to this podcast are feeling the same way. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. We're, we're preaching to the choir here at the online course master show. Cool. So let's dive into scripting. Um, it's sort of the next topic in the process of creating a course in the past couple episodes. We've talked about the length of the course, setting goals, um, you know, outlining or structuring an engaging course Um, But one question I often get is whether you should script or outline and if you do each, like what the pros and cons or how to actually do it. So we're going to talk about all of that. But first, let's talk about the benefits of each because I think both have their place. Uh, But can you kind of help us get started with the benefits of scripting and also the benefits of outlining? Yeah, so... um when we talk about outlining and we talk about scripting, they're two different things. Outlining is generally going to be kind of bullet points. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go into major detail. You might have a little bit of details about things you want to talk about. Um, when we talk about scripting, that's pretty much word for word verbatim. You're going to be looking at, like, say, a teleprompter or a screen, and you're going to be reading what you already wrote. Um, so like you said, they both have cons, they both have benefits. I've done them both. 
uh, I still to this day can't decide on which one I like better um, because of the the cons and and the pros. So with with outlines, um, you you write bullet points and you're just teaching what you know. And this comes off very naturally mm-hmm. because you're just kind of speaking from your your brain, you're speaking from your heart, um, and you're able to just get those thoughts out there. Now, you might stumble a little bit because you don't have everything written out for you, but if you know what you're teaching, it's not really a problem. You, mm-hmm. you're, just, you're just teaching someone and you have some bullet points that you're looking over, maybe some notes. Um, now, when you script, um, you're reading word for word. So you've already thought about what you're going to say ahead of time. And the con to that is it sounds great. You know, if, uh, if you can read naturally, you can really make it sound really great. However, it can come off unnaturally and it can sound robotic mm-hmm. if you're not reading it the right way. So, um, With outlines, it's going to come off more naturally. It can also be a little quicker because you're just writing out the outlines. Um, With scripting, it's going to go a little slower because you have to write out everything word for word. But it speeds it up in the recording and the editing process because Mm -hmm. you're probably going to have uh, fewer mistakes because you you've already written what you're going to say. Uh, is there anything else that you could add to that? I, I think a lot of students that actually comment on my videos. Hopefully, hopefully this is the same for most people. They actually they're like, wow, like how do you do you? They think I script the entire video because it's pretty clear and flows well. That's actually mostly just good editing um, because for most of my video my courses up to this point I have just created an outline and I think that for me is is easier but there's also um, I've started scripting a few courses especially this latest photography masterclass when I was collaborating with two other instructors I found that to be very beneficial once we got into recording the course all our scripts were ready to go and it just made the recording process a lot easier. We had done another video production course um, last year, didn't script, just had an outline and man, it would literally take, you know, an hour to get one video done that would end up being like three or four minutes. And after going through that with this, these specific co-instructors, we realized it would be for us and for this class much better to, um, to script. And I think just, Scripting also, there's another benefit of you're writing the, the, everything down. You can think about it. You can be very specific about what you want to get across, which usually ends up being better content. But you can also repurpose it. It's easier to create closed captions th- with if you stick to a script. You can repurpose the script as an ebook. You can re- or blog articles or things like that. You have this content already built out. Um, if you do decide to actually script, but there's pro- the pros and the cons of both. Um, I think you should try both. And if like you are outline just doing an outline and you can't, you know, stay on topic, you lose your place and it's taking you so long to get stuff across, try scripting. I know a lot of, uh, friends who do just script all of their lessons. But if you can do an outline and it can come across clear, try that and see if, if students like it, of, of course. Um, a lot of it is just figuring out what sort of process and workflow you want. So Yeah, I, I want to throw in there too, you know, I think it kind of depends on what kind of person you are too. Mm-hmm. If you're someone who's naturally a writer and doesn't do, maybe you're not so extroverted or you don't do any public speaking, or you're not comfortable with creating courses yet, you know, scripting might be better to start off with. You just got to learn to make it sound natural because uh, uh, you need to, you know, watch videos or take courses on how to speak properly and not sound robotic. Um, if you're a person who's more extroverted and you like just telling stories and you do public speaking, outlines are probably going to be good for you. One thing that is always brought up is timing. You know, mm-hmm. am I going to save time scripting? Or am I going to save time outlining? And I want to say, from my experience, it balances out. You're either going to spend more time scripting and less time editing, or you're going to spend less time outlining and more time editing. I feel like time probably isn't a major factor here because one way or another, you're going to spend time either up front or on the back end, depending on which one you choose. Yeah, and I think saying that, though, 
if you can come across naturally with a script, that might be the better option because of all the other benefits of, I, th- mm-hmm. I actually do think that the content pro- in general will be more concise and better. You'll have mm-hmm. thought about it and you have like all those other repur- being able to repurpose it. Um, yeah. so I, and just, yeah, I guess it depends on, it depends on the person, but I would say, um, that, but also it depends on the type of class too for like screencast videos where you're you're walking through a program an application like photoshop or you're teaching someone how to build a website with wordpress that would be really hard to script the entire thing because you'd have to like literally practice it while you're scripting and that might not come across that well for me it's a lot better to outline those types of courses where it I'm just walking through my process and talking about it. And if you're an expert in that topic, then it should come across natural. I think the main thing with that is to actually outline the lesson though, and not just say, oh, this lesson is about how to export your video because I found I can go on tangents for for Mm. days with that. Make sure for each lesson or for each outline, you're bullet pointing specific points and you have that outline when you're recording so it refreshes your memory and you're sticking to the those points. Are there any other sort of tips for outlining um, a course that you could throw out there? No, I would say that you you made a good point. At the very least, you should have a basic outline. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say that your lecture is five minutes long and you're going to teach one major point. You should at least have like three or four bullet points about what you want to talk about through that video just so you have kind of a a pathway to take so you're not just rambling on and on and on. I think that that's very important. Um, I could use uh, the web development course I'm working on now as a good example. This is where I found my happy medium. So I'm doing talking head videos, which is you talking into the camera like we're doing here on the the video. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'm also doing uh, slides. So I have slides on the screen where I'm talking about definitions, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm speaking over those slides. So a voiceover, and I am also doing a screencast where we go into, uh, an editor and I show them how to code. So for the talking head videos, I script those out because I'm on camera, I'm presenting and I want that to sound really professional. So I've scripted out and I use a teleprompter for mm-hmm. my talking head videos. When I do the slides, I am just going through the slides and talking over those. The slides have most of the information, so I'm pretty much repeating what's on the slide, so it's already an outline built into the video. I don't script that. I can pretty much look at that and go with it. And then, like you said, the technical side, when I get into the text editor and I'm teaching them how to code, I'm definitely not scripting because I want that to feel natural. I want them to feel like they're sitting there right next to me, Mm -hmm. watching me code and me showing them how to do that. So that's kind of where I'm at right now uh, and have found that balance. Nice. And so in terms of um, that's good for outlining for scripting, I have a couple tips and then just you can throw in any you have. One is while you're actually writing your script out to practice saying it out loud because sometimes you write in a different way than you would talk and you might need to kind of balance that out a little bit. You might need to learn how to write the way you talk, but also you might need to kind of change how you talk to be a little bit more like you write, which I would say is a little bit, I keep saying this, but more concise and to the point. Um, And also practice it practice and record yourself and we're going to talk about some tools that you can use when scripting like teleprompters but we do suggest using a teleprompter Um, when you do that practice it look at the video see how it looks Uh, there's things you can do to make it look a little bit better like sometimes when you're filming yourself using a teleprompter depending on how far you are from the camera depending on how large the text actually is it can look like your eyes are moving back and forth. Mm. And you can also kind of see, am I looking robotic? And you can learn like for yourself how to relax a little bit more. And I would say like just practicing is one of my best tips. Um, Any other tips for scripting? No, uh, practicing is great. You know, especially if you have someone else you can practice with just to have them hear it and see how you sound. Um, Using uh, 
inflections in your voice mm -hmm. uh, definitely helps. Uh, these are little things that I suggest you you go study if you do want to script a little bit more because they do help. You know, if you talk in a very monotone thing all the time, then it's going to sound robot. You want to have like highs and you want to have lows and you want to have expression, uh, smile on camera. Like when you're talking, that's one thing that really helped me out a lot was when you're smiling and you have a good natural presence, people can see that they can mm -hmm. hear it. Uh, it makes it sound better. Um, so I definitely think, you know, practicing, um, really does help out a lot to, um, going through those motions and those sounds. And it might take a couple takes to get used to, but you, you'll get there. It's, it's not that bad. Once you get past the first couple hurdles and yeah. you learn how to do it, it, it becomes pretty easy and you can make it sound really professional when you do script. Yeah. And one thing too, is with those inflections, you don't necessarily have to stick to the script and i found that a lot when i'm recording a course that i scripted out when i'm actually there in front of the camera there might be other things that i think about that i need to add or like little side stories or thing examples that i want to add uh, while i'm filming and that's totally fine i mean the only downside to that is that if you are using your script as uh, your closed captions or uh, or something like that then you would have to adjust that but i find balancing your script with sort of just adding ad lib stuff c can help as well. I mean, really specific tips like, and this is actually important for outlining and scripting, but specifically for scripting, you might want to actually include it in the script is slating at the beginning of each video, what video it is, what number, uh, this just helps me with editing. If I'm saying this is section 3.1, intro to exposure or whatever, whatever lesson it is, um, just slating at the beginning. I've also found that recording in order, uh, this is kind of a different topic, but for both outlining and scripting, recording your lessons in order is generally a good thing because it helps you be in the mindset of the student and you, you know, you're not jumping around and you, you're teaching it in order. So, I guess what I meant, I, I guess the problem is sometimes when I've taught out of order, I end up repeating lessons or concepts. Mm -hmm. But if you go through the entire process of recording your course in order, you can have more of a flow to it. And you know, like, oh, did I already talk about this topic? No, then let's talk, add this here or, or whatever. Um, so you have a we can talk a little bit more about the tools that we've used for mm -hmm. scripting. Um, do you have an outline or a, a script teleprompter or anything like that script yeah. app that you use? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, I love, I love tools and things of that nature. So, uh, we can talk about teleprompters. We can talk about programs and things that you can use. Um, I do want to, uh, also talk about slating because you mentioned that. And I think that that's, uh, important for anyone who's using like a teleprompter or, you know, scripting and talking into a camera. Uh, how do you get those things to line up? Like when you start editing, cause I know that's, that's something a lot of people don't know how to do. Um, if you're recording audio and video and scripting, and then you sit down and you're ready to edit, uh, how do you get that stuff to line up in the editor? Uh, mm -hmm. do you want to talk about that real quick before we go into the tools? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think it, for me, it depends on how you're recording things like literally slating is there for which if you're, you know, a movie buff, you've seen the slate before as the clapper that you have the information for the scene, the director, and it claps and it makes a clapping noise. And that's used to sync up the audio that's being recorded separately from the video. And so you see like as an editor, when that clapper hits the hits and claps, that's when that spike in the audio sh where it should go. Um, if mm -hmm. you're recording everything together and you're not recording audio separately and you don't have to sync, then slating is more for the benefit of just organizing. And, you know, as soon as you are getting into editing, you open up this one video and then you see, oh, this is lesson you're saying literally, or you could have it visually on a slate itself. But usually what I do is just, I just say out loud, this is lesson four or section four, lesson 25, whatever it is, just so that it speeds up the process in, in post-production. Yeah. And I want to talk about the slating. I thought it's just kind of a cool, you know, thing to have in there that when, when you're doing that clapper, 
and you're syncing those things up, you're using an audio uh, signal to kind of tell you where you're you're at. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have a clapper, you can just use your hands. I put my hands in front of the camera, mm -hmm. I clap, and then I can look for the audio where it spikes and where my hands meet, and I can match those up. Another thing that you can do is when you're you're scripting and you're outlining and you're reading those when you start recording, and we'll probably talk about this a little more in depth later on, you can also make sounds and clap. We do that you know, with this podcast. If we make a mistake and we want to start over, we'll clap or we'll snap our fingers or make a sound to visually show when you start editing. Uh, I was reading the script, but this is a mistake. I need to edit this out and continue at this point. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about some of the tools uh, first of all, let's talk about what you used to write the script before we talk about teleprompters. Mm -hmm. um, I I have fallen in love with Google Drive. That's yep. been like my go-to thing for everything for the past year or two now. Um, I really like writing in uh, Google Docs, which is like the Word version mm -hmm. um, of of Microsoft. So I go in there and I can type up my bullet points. One thing that I like about Google Drive is I can access it anywhere. So yeah. if, I, if I'm on my desktop at the house, I can write my script or I can write my outlines out. And then if I want to go to the coffee shop and take my laptop with me, I have the access to pull it up right there and continue that work process. And I don't have to worry about transferring files and what have you. Uh, what do you use to write your scripts with? Yeah, I, I'm the same way, man. I use Google Docs for everything. Um, and I like have, you know, most of us have Internet access uh, a lot of places. Um, well, I wouldn't say most of us. We're very fortunate if we do have Internet access at our home and at our work or wherever we go nowadays. And so it's nice to be able to just bring those things up and it's always saved on the cloud and easy to search and access. And I've found that that's great for outlining or for actually writing out scripts and also for collaborating with other people. Uh, again, back to this photography course with my two co-instructors, we were able to edit each other's scripts and, and you know, actually make them better and just collaborate a lot easier. And I find that Google Docs or Google Drive and all the Google tools that work together are just so easy to use for me. There's other tools out there that, you know, try to help with productivity and stuff. But sometimes it's as simple as just using a Google Doc to list out, you know, a a checklist or a to-do list. I, I mean, this is like not necessarily for scripting or outlining, but I used to use, what was the tool I used? I've used all those sort of productivity tools like Trello and Asana and Evernote. And I'm trying to think the one, I'm, I'm pulling up my phone right now. There's one that I was using for a while. Gosh, I can't. Anyway, I probably deleted it. And then I started using, actually Google has their own sort of to-do list app called Google Keep, which I didn't know about until recently. And I was super into that and I still use it. But when I was coming up with a to-do list for our photography masterclass, I was like, I should just put this in a Google Doc and just make <laughs> it a bullet point list because it, yeah. it'll be easier for like my co-instructors. I don't know if they use Google Keep, even though you can share and collaborate to-do lists on there. But sometimes just having a Google Doc is is easier than anything else. So, so yeah, that was a well, long-winded way to say that <laughs> I also use Google Docs. Now let's go and, to the next topic. So. <laughs> well, the other talking about Google Docs, another great thing about that is they have a lot of integration with the teleprompting apps, uh, which we yeah. can talk about. So uh, I use a we use a teleprompter. If you're not familiar with that, that's basically a mirror that a device like a iPad or a computer screen or whatever sits sits below the mirror and it reflects into the mirror so that you can see. So you're, you're looking at the mirror, but you're seeing the reflection of what's ever on the screen below it. And then it's a two way mirror, basically more or less where a camera sits behind the mirror and films. So mm -hmm. as you're looking straight into the mirror and you're reading the script, you've seen these probably in like, you know, political conferences, the president or whoever will look into a teleprompter. And as they're reading the script, the camera is behind the teleprompter filming you. Mm -hmm. The benefit of that is that you're looking directly at the camera as you speak. Um, what a lot of people will do, and there's nothing wrong with it, is that they'll set a screen slightly above or slightly below the camera. And that's okay, mm -hmm. except you're not looking at the camera. When when you have to keep looking down at your notes like I'm doing here. Even if it's uh, just on, a little bit video, above or a, below, it's you, you can you tell. You see it. 
Yeah, yeah, you can tell. So it just looks a little more professional now uh, using a teleprompter. So that we use teleprompter applications to display the text. And uh, my point was that Google Drive will integrate with these applications. So I can write my script on a Google Doc, and then I can actually upload that directly to the, the software I use, which is called Prompt Smart Pro. And it will it will bring that Google Doc in directly, so I don't have to re-edit or re-upload or anything like that. Yeah, and that's there's a couple apps out there, but Prompt Smart Pro is the one that I use. That's available for iOS devices. I don't think they have an app for Android yet. Um, Teleprompter Lite is a, another free version. That's a free app for iOS. And then there's one called Simple Teleprompter that I researched that has good re- reviews for Android. What I love about Prompt Smart Pro are the options for the speed of your script. So, you know, you're, even if you're filming by yourself, you're going to need your script to be going and you're going to be talking. And there's different ways you can do it. You can either have it set to a specific speed where you say, and that you can adjust it to be, you know, faster or, sh- or slower. And you adjust it to sort of how you would naturally speak and you just press play and it starts going. Or what they have is a voice track feature, which I really love, which has made all the difference for filming by mm-hmm. yourself, where the if it's on your iPad or your iPhone or whatever device, it actually listens to you. And while you speak, it moves the moves the script for you. So if you pause or if you stop or if you go on a tangent or whatever, it will try to stay uh, on track with you. Now, it's not perfect depending on where you're filming, how far you're filming away from your camera and your setup. I've found that it can be a little bit tricky or spotty um, and not work, but I love those options. Another thing that that app has is a side app for a remote where you could use your phone or someone else can use their phone as a remote for the actual speed of the tele- the script. And so they can move it up and down, change the speed. If you're sitting in front of the camera, you can be using your phone as a way to pause it or start it or go back or forward. And so Prompt Smart Pro is one that um, I would definitely recommend investing in if if you have the budget or those other free options, teleprompter light and simple teleprompter. Now back to the teleprompter itself. Do you know the brand of the one that you have? Uh, no, the the one that I have, and I I can tell a little funny story about this. Um, sometimes in life, it is better to just invest in the proper equipment <laughs> yes. than trying to do it on your own. I love DIY. I love making things. But man, sometimes it can definitely, uh, that perfectionism episode we talk about can kick in and I end up spending too much time and money uh, versus just getting what we needed. So I tried to make my own teleprompter. Uh, I looked up directions. I got the wood. I built it. I mean, it, it turned out nice. It was heavy. It was like, I don't know, like 60 pounds or something ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> like, like about to break the stand that it was on. I couldn't find the right glass. Um, you have to use a, a specific glass for teleprompters. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to use uh, different types of glass. I was going a- across town to glass suppliers and having them cut me custom glass. It was ridiculous. I probably spent more money and time messing with that than I should have. So I went on uh, Amazon. I found... Uh, I think it's about 80 bucks or so. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a uh, I, an iPad teleprompter. So mm-hmm. it has the ability to let you move the camera back and forth on it. Um, and then you set your iPad at the bottom of the teleprompter so it can reflect up into the glass. And then it has a nice little cloth cover uh, to cover everything up. And then it has the actual beam splitter glass. That is the kind of two-way glass that teleprompters use uh, that give you the reflection on one side and the ability to shoot from the camera from the other side. So it's it works great. Um, I'm able to write my script inside of Google Docs. Mm-hmm. I upload the script to Prompt Smart Pro on the iPad. And because I already wrote it, you know, on Google Google Docs and everything's in the cloud, uh, Prompt Smart Pro pulls it over. It puts it in the application. It's on my iPad. Then I set my iPad underneath the glass of the teleprompter. I turn on the camera and I'm ready to record. Um, that's the one I use. And then I'm I'm also looking at getting the uh, Parrot teleprompter. Yeah. 
I don't know if you've used it. Uh, a buddy of mine has it, and I was looking at it the other day. The glass is a lot smaller, so you use your phone to reflect instead of the iPad, so you're going to have a smaller image, but it hooks on the front lens of my DSLR camera, and uh, it seems like it'd just be a little easier to set up in these smaller situations. Mm -hmm. I'm only standing six feet away from my camera. It's not that big of a deal. Now, if I was uh, reading something from a larger distance, I'd probably use my larger teleprompter. But yeah. uh, which one? Which ones have you used? Which ones do you like or are oh. using? Well, I've also heard that the Parrot prompt teleprompter is a good one. The one that I used is made by Caddy Buddy. If you go on Amazon and search for teleprompter by Caddy Bu Buddy, C A D D I E, um, it was like a hundred bucks or so. Um, so it was a little bit more expensive, but it probably does the same thing. I can I K A N is another brand that puts out a teleprompter that um, is on Amazon that a lot of people use as well. So, um, but really, like you said, investing in this equipment is worth it if you can, especially rather than maybe trying to build it yourself, but also rather than just putting your screen, your phone, trying to put it right above the lens or below the lens, because you will be able to tell. Um, but really with those two pieces of equipment, the app and the teleprompter, it's really easy now. Um, but that being said, you might not be recording talking head videos where this is necessary and you, there's actually free online teleprompters in the sense where you can put a script and they'll play it back to you and it will scroll and it makes it easier for you to read out. Um, if you don't want to just read it from a document or if you do want to use that as sort of a, if you can't get invest in the teleprompter, there's two websites I would recommend easyprompter.com mm -hmm. and qprompter.com, um, q c u e prompter.com. I mean, easyprompter.com, you have to sign up for an account, but, and they have a, a pro plan where you get all sorts of extra features like uh, keyboard shortcuts and all remote control, smartphone remote control, but you can sign up for free and you can adjust the font size, the speed, um, all kinds of stuff at easyprompter.com. Um, and the last thing I'll say in this episode, and if you have any other tips or tricks or advice, is just a couple of tips if you are testing out your teleprompter and you're trying to figure out the right distance, the right size for the text so that it doesn't look like you are reading. In general, the further the camera away from you, it's going to be harder for the viewer to see those subtle eye mo movements from left to right. So mm -hmm. putting your camera as far back as possible is good. Of course, if it makes sense for your composition and if you have the space. But the other thing which actually is a little bit less intuitive is increasing the size of your font can help. Now test it out, see how it looks for you as an individual, but actually increasing the size of the font, um, you, the way that we read, we kind of actually can comprehend what we're reading better without actually, with kind of just seeing the general size of the words without actually having to look line by line if it's smaller. And that might actually result in a better video without you looking like you're looking left to right. Um, mm -hmm. So try increasing the size of your font if you find that it looks like you're, you're looking sideways. Any other sort of tips or topics or things you want to say about scripting or outlining before I wrap it up? No, I, th I think you uh, hit them pretty well. I was going to say uh, one reason why I was looking into the Parrot teleprompter is it, it is smaller. Mm -hmm. So because of the distance that I have, I feel like my eyes won't move so much where I have the big iPad screen. You know, I have a lot more distance to go across mm -hmm. where when I go down to the smaller teleprompter, I think it'll be better because I won't have so much distance to go back and forth. And, uh, you know, just practicing with it. I will say you don't have to have a teleprompter. You don't have to script. Mm -hmm. People are interested in the information. Hopefully, you know what you're talking about and the script will help make it sound professional. The teleprompter will help make it sound professional once you get it right and you learn how to speak on a script, but it's not necessary. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy a $200 teleprompter and you got to buy all this fancy equipment. Uh, you know, we both started uh, very humble beginnings. I had some very basic software, $15 screencast software and my computer and a microphone when yeah. I started and was able to do very well. I could continue to do that today. Uh, 
uh, you know, we like to up our game a little bit. So I like buying these toys and playing around with them, but it's not necessary. Yeah. You can have a nice outline, know what you're talking about, reference your outline, and you'll be just fine too. And if I'm completely honest, there's days where I feel too lazy to set up my teleprompter. <laughs> and so I just bring up my outline or even the script and I will look at one line. I'll kind of memorize it, practice it. And I'll look at the camera and read that line. And then I'll go to the next one and do the same. And then with the magic of editing, I put it all together. I'll cover it up with some photos or some B-roll video or graphics so that it seems like I'm saying this entire video from start to end. But a lot of it is just the, the magic of editing. So you, like Jeremy said, you don't need a teleprompter. Um, it's just one of those investments that can take up take your game to the next level. So hopefully right. this kind of helps you understand whether you should script or not or what to do if you do decide to script. Um, and if you have any other questions and you want to follow up on this topic with us, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com, click the community button up at the top and join the Facebook group. Jeremy and I are there. We are willing to give you personalized feedback and support along with the hundreds of other online instructors who are a part of that group on Facebook. So thank you so much again for watching and listening to this episode of the Online Course Masters podcast. And until next time, have a beautiful day and a beautiful week.